everybody, my name is Katie Sauter. I'm an engineer by day, wedding planner by night, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about some photo booth rage that is happening from the both the, the photo booth side and also the wedding planner side, but mostly from the photo booth owner's perspective. Round one. What I don't really mention very often is that I also own a photo booth business, so uh, we are not exempt from the drama. <laughs> um, but I gotta say, most of the drama does happen to the wedding planners. Let's dive into our first story. This one I'm gonna call photo booth business rages over a wedding planner. Who will win? Photo booth business or the wedding planner? Let's find out. All right, let's start from the wedding planner's perspective. I just want to follow up on a kind of disappointing experience last night. The bride and groom approached Jason at 9.34 p.m. and said they had asked him that they could take a photo together. They had lost track of time having fun at their reception and had gotten barely any photos in the booth. Jason said no. The bride practically begged him and he stood strong that he couldn't be bothered since it was four minutes past the contracted time. I have worked with you very little, so not sure if it's the company policy to avoid going above and beyond for clients. They were so disappointed and it left a really poor impression on me, especially because he was just standing there for the first bit of the time when people weren't taking any photos yet. Doing that for them would have went a long way. Well, I don't think it's unreasonable for poor Jason to be standing there. Um, that's part of the job, right? It would be definitely poor to not let the bride and groom take a picture four minutes after the contracted time, um, especially if they were begging. So let's hear it from the photo booth owner's perspective. She's writing to the uh, a photo booth network on Facebook. All right, I got my first disappointed planner and bride after seven years from last night's wedding. Planner emailed the disappointment, even though the bride has my contact info, but haven't left a bad review yet. We haven't had time to chat with my attendant because he's at an event now and want him to focus on that. But even if his story is they came later after he had packed down, I don't want to go into he said, she said. Our contracted time was 6.30 to 9.30 and even confirmed if this was the desired time frame with planner. How should I respond to this planner's email? She has an update. The couple did get photos in the booth. He had the printer packed in the case and the booth half broken down when they came back around 9.45ish, so 15 minutes after the contracted time. He said he could put it back together, would take a few minutes. The bride and groom said, never mind. Okay, doesn't sound like there's a problem. One point goes to the photo booth business. Let's see what others have written. And just to throw in a two cents parting thought, I had a wedding last night and the planner talked with me to confirm our end time to make sure that her people made it to the booth before we ended. This lady should take notes. Yes, all planners are not created equally. She never even sent me a final timeline or layout. What? No, your planner should be sending you a final timeline and layout. That's absurd. Someone else wrote, I so appreciate planners who do this. Yeah, honestly, um, I always make sure that my couples have a, an opportunity to make it to the booth before the time runs out. I always am like, hey, by the way, your the contracted time for them is almost up. Go check out the booth. Like, that's what a good planner should be doing. I didn't realize people weren't doing this. Maybe don't hire someone like that. Someone else writes, I'm in the minority here. A contract is a contract. The wording and attitude she's giving you doesn't scream professional planner to me. Ooh, another punch. Planner's not doing well in this fight. She continues by saying, we asked the couple several times throughout the evening to take photos, interact with the guests and DJ. It's not up to him to make people use this when the contract starts. I think the planner is gone or anyway, and honestly wouldn't really want to work with her next time after receiving the email above. Yeah, she says, you would have AI write something brilliant saying you upheld your contract and did the very best job with the contracted times. I'm so tired of people expecting things without wanting to pay for them. If you ask to take pictures 15 minutes after the contract ends, you should pay to extend it. I feel like 15 minutes though is a little, that's, that's maybe a little excessive. Anyway, reason 857 on why I stay away from brides. Oh gosh, I wouldn't lose any sleep over this. Photo booth business owner, I don't know, they're a bit judgmental to me. Oh, maybe a little, little intense. The author wrote, 
I'm actually feeling the same as you. I've learned that not all planners are created equally and I've had bad planners. I really want to be like, um, you're the planner. It's your job to take care of these details. Remind the bride and groom of timing, etc. They they do it for the photographers, first dance, etc. I did my job to confirm the timeline when the booth was supposed to be open and show we can't really make people use the booth. We definitely go above and beyond when the timing is right, but no, not to get taken advantage of. I'm wondering if the couple were not happy with her and she's deflecting now. I plan to reach out to the bride first with apologies to her, see what happens next. Someone else wrote, I highly recommend having RTYR or something like it help you write something that sounds like an apology but isn't i'd say i'd also say he did a last call if he did i think uh yeah using ai to help you write an email is probably a good idea in this situation because it will you might say something you regret otherwise uh at least wait a day before emailing back right jason just standing there at the beginning was jason technically doing his job within the contracted time that is the part that really angers me set up and breakdown and standing there are work too I would throw in a perk like a photo album or something, but little can be done now and there is certainly no convincing this planner. She has expressed that she does not value Jason's time. Yeah, that's so true. Just being there and being present is part of the job. You can't control who actually comes to your booth and when. Seems like the photo booth owner is the winner here. <laughs> Definitely not this planner. Sounds like this planner needs to pull it together. I do have one more story from a frazzled photo booth owner. First, shameless plug time! I have a free 12 month planning timeline. It is complete with tips for each and every aspect of the planning process. And I made it out of frustration because a lot of planning timelines out there feel incomplete or don't feel detailed enough. And I think it's important that you should be able to have a, a complete timeline that actually like helps you plan a wedding. It even reminds you when to buy the cake topper. But that's not all! Gee, I'm starting to sound like a Billy Mays commercial, right? For the amazing price of free 99, you can also have a wedding party mini guide. That's right, just click on the link below for a free mini party wedding guide. That's great for figuring out what the roles are um, and has some sweet little tips. It's on the link below. Two for the price of free 99, that's what it is. Shame of <laughs> time over. This second story I'm calling Entitled Influencer Wants a Discount on Her Photo Booth for Her Wedding. Photo booth owner writes, Okay, ladies, I've had a bride message me with this question. Besides bluntly telling her that we don't work for exposure, how do I politely tell her no? She fancies herself as an influencer, I guess given she has a few thousand followers. It's common these days for young women to have followers in the thousands. They don't ask for discounts. I assume she's going to post about her wedding no matter what. This is her message. I have a large social media following on my social media is over 9k followers on Facebook. Would there be an option for a slight discount if I posted about your company and the mirror and the experience? I do have of my following I can send with posts that have high engagement. Alright, 46 comments. I'm only going to pick the best comments. Another photo booth owner responded. I reserve my special wedding pricing for active duty military and first responders, including wildfire crews. Have you put your life on the line for anyone today or saved one? No? No. Huh. Well, then maybe you can find another company that finds influencers more important than heroes and their soon to be spouses. <laughs> oh, it's spicy. Oh, I love it. Someone else gives a, a potential solution. Tell her you don't do that, but you will give her a booking code and when people book using her code, you'll pay her X number of dollars and she could end up making all of her money back and then some from the bookings. I love that she writes in. Right. Oh, well, it'll never happen, but cool if it does. Nicer than saying F off. <laughs> she says she'll take the code and wants to know what that deal will get her followers. But <laughs> she just rolled her eyes. I think that's actually a pretty reasonable question, personally. Um, cause like, if you get a code, you want your your followers to benefit from it, right? The response was, offer $50 when they mention hashtag whatever her name is at booking. That's brilliant. I don't think we learned anything from this today. I think I forgot to give the, the solder seal of failure on one of my other videos recently. Oops. If you're interested in a little more drama video where I talk about uh, an aunt, an amazing aunt who pays for her niece's wedding, uh, that one probably got the solder seal of failure and I just forgot to actually do that. My bad. So I would say for both of these stories, they uh, 
I don't think we learned anything that interesting from them. Did we learn something at all? Hmm, did we learn something from them? We definitely learned that not all planners are created equal. Find yourself a good planner. If you're gonna get a planner, like, definitely speak to them a while and make sure that they actually are able to do things like get you to the photo booth that you bought and spent good money on. Some of these photo booths are like a thousand dollars or more. And also standing there is part of the job. That's another thing we learned, right? Well, we did learn. So I have an amazing freaky timeline that you should check out in the link below. And it comes with a mini wedding party mini guide. But if you found this video fun, you might also enjoy one of my other videos where I tackle uh, some entitled family drama. Uh, this poor girl, you know, dealing with some drama. If you found this fun, and in the meantime, don't forget to give that like button a sweet little boot. Give that subscribe a nice warm embrace, but keep it PG for me, MK.